Treasurer Josh Frydenberg joins me before the last parliamentary sitting fortnight of the year. Treasurer, welcome to National Wrap. Nice to be with you, Patricia. You and the Prime Minister will meet with federal Victorian MPs first thing tomorrow morning to discuss the Victorian election results. What will you tell them? Well, obviously, we'll dissect uh, what went wrong for the Victorian Party and learn the lessons that we can apply to a successful campaign at the federal level next year. Uh, as Matthew Guy, the Liberal leader, said, uh, this was a state election fought on state-based issues. The noise from Canberra certainly didn't help, but that wasn't the determining factor. Uh, and if you look at history, Patricia, uh, first term uh, majority governments in Victoria have never been denied a second term in a hundred years in our state. This isn't about a second term, though, Josh Frydenberg. This is a swing to Labor, a significant swing and a repudiation in your own heartland. In fact, in Hawthorne, in places that you represent federally, you were quick to separate your federal party from the resounding election, election loss in Victoria. But now that you've had some time to think, do you accept that the knifing of Malcolm Turnbull has been absolutely toxic in Victoria? As I said, the determining factor wasn't what happened in Canberra. Uh, it was what played out in, on the ground. And Labor had a very big spending agenda. Uh, when the issues were raised with congestion, they threw more money at transport. When issues were raised with energy prices, they threw subsidies for solar panels. Uh, issues were raised with health, they threw more money at that. Now, people weren't concerned about the implications or the economic consequences of more spending because Labor only revealed that it was doubling the debt with 48 hours to go. Uh, that is what transpired and Labor ran a very disciplined campaign in the media too. There were a lot of attack ads uh, with false accusations there of, were a lot of cuts attack. and There was actually a lot of imagery of some of your federal colleagues, in fact, in some of Labor's state campaigns. So you say, oh, look, you know, it's all a state issue. And yet Tony Abbott, we know, Scott Morrison, Peter Dutton actually was in some of that material of the state Labor Party. So they were reminding voters in Victoria of the chaos in Canberra, weren't they? Well, Labor's been shameless in trying to portray the, the Liberal Party uh, as putting as making cuts to areas where we're not. Uh, and that's particular in, in the state uh, campaign of Victoria. They were focusing on health and education. And as you know, at the last federal campaign, they ran a Medi-Scare campaign. But if you look at the history of Victoria, Patricia, uh, we've lost five out of the last six state elections. But at the same time, we've won four out of the last six federal elections. So Victoria is slightly different to other parts of the country. There will be lessons to be learned, particularly around uh, the grassroots ground campaign that we need to run and countering some of these lies from the Labor okay, Party. Okay, but does it prove that Victoria is Australia's most progressive state and that Victorians don't like Liberal politicians they perceive as being from the hard right? Look, I, I disagree with that. You don't completely. think there's been a repudiation of a lurch to the right? Look, I, I think, as I said, it was it was a election that was run on state-based issues. But there you was don't a lot think that? Was, my question is, do you think it's a repudiation of the Liberal Party lurching to the right? No, I don't. I don't accept what you've just said to okay, me. Okay, but seats like yours are in trouble if this result is replicated at the federal poll. Do you think your party should pivot on policy to appeal to voters? who are rejecting your party's direction. We're talk talking about small L liberals. We're talking about the people like the people in the seat of Wentworth that you recently lost a federal electorate to. That's what we're talking about here. Does your party need to pivot on some policies? Well, it's interesting, Patricia. I doubt you would have put these questions to Anthony Albanese after they lost the recent Tasmanian state election or the recent South Australian state election, or indeed after Bill Shorten did his famous victory lap after the 2016 election and he spent three years in opposition. The reality is uh, we've been seen big swings in Victoria before. In 2002, during the halcyon years of the Howard and Costello government, when the economy was doing very well, uh, Steve Brax... Uh, 
uh, won 19 seats off the uh, off the coalition, and there was an eight and a half percent swing against the coalition in that state. So I'm not saying there aren't lessons to okay, be learned. Okay, well let's talk about the lessons are. then on policy because there has been a view that your political party, federally and and clearly it played out at a state level, has neglected issues. One that you worked on, uh, climate change and energy, for instance, that you've moved in a direction that the electorate is uncomfortable with. The electorate in your own heartland, do you think you need to recalibrate those policies now? Well, we're focusing on reducing emissions and reducing power prices at the same time. What didn't stick on Daniel Andrews in Victoria uh, was the impact of his policies that led to an 80 per cent increase in uh, wholesale power prices in that state following the closure of Hazelwood and the drastic uh, interventions that were required by the energy market operator who were concerned about the stability of the Victorian system and the fact that Victoria became a net energy importer at certain times as opposed to always being an exporter of energy. Now, the, the argument was put, but it didn't stick to Labor. What we need to focus on is ensuring that people get the lowest possible power prices because that is their first concern and, we've, and we're doing that through implementing the ACCC's recommendations. But when it comes to emissions reduction, we also have policies in place there, whether it's the Emissions Reduction Fund or the National Energy Productivity Plan or the Renewable Energy Target or the work of the Clean Energy okay. Finance Corporation that has seen uh, so emissions just, get to its lowest right. level on a per let's capita and GDP clar- basis let's just clarify. in 28 years. Let's just clarify. So you don't think there needs to be a recalibration of policy to appeal to some of of your heartland that you clearly are losing in places like Victoria and and other places across the country? Well look our core equities are economic security and national security and when it comes to the economy uh, it is running well. We've seen since we last so uh, met no in the parliament. collaboration you're, you're just talking about your economic policy but I'm asking you more broadly do you think at that meeting tomorrow morning will you talk about a pivoting on these policies? What we will focus on is the lessons to be learnt out of the state campaign, but more importantly, how to rebut some of these Labor lies and to do that in real time that we know will come at the next federal election as it came at the last federal election. But when we come to our policy settings, we know our economic plan is working. Unemployment is down to its lowest level since 2012. We're growing at its... The economy's growing at its fastest rate since the height of the mining boom. We've created more than a million new jobs and cut taxes. Okay. That's what we are delivering for there's, the people across Victoria and across the country. There's been a lot of debate that this was a failure of a scare campaign in Victoria. One senior Liberal MP has told Fairfax Media that Peter Dutton's claim in January that Victorians were scared to go out to restaurants because of African gang violence had caused enormous damage in the state. Do you think it caused lots of damage? No, I don't. And I think he was actually explaining a reality that we've seen in Victoria, which is... What's the reality? Victorians going out being scared? I don't know many Victorians that are scared to go out. Well, Patricia, the, the numbers show a dramatic increase in crime on Daniel Andrews' watch. But Home are Victorians invasions... scared to go out, Josh, honestly? <laughs> Well, I can tell you that people have a concern about their level of safety. That's a different it, question. Well, That's no, a different yeah, but, question. It's, but it's all around the same topic, which is there's been a 43% increase in home invasions in Victoria. We've seen carjackings. We've seen a breakdown in the juvenile justice system. I mean, during a campaign, we saw a guy, you know, chefs beaten up. Uh, in the St Kilda foreshore. I mean, we have seen repeat uh, incident after incident where people's uh, safety has been threatened in the state of Victoria. Now, John Pizzuto and Matthew Guy put a very uh, strong set of policies to increase the penalties that would apply. In response, uh, what uh, Daniel Andrews said was he was going to increase uh, funding sure. for the police. And, and look, obviously Daniel Andrews was, won the election. He certainly did. Labor has adopted the National Energy Guarantee, which is your baby. It's your creation. <laughs> how can I've, got, you... I've got two babies, thank okay, you Okay, I know much. you've got lovely babies, but so <laughs> is the neg. How can you personally argue against a policy that you came up with? 
Well, I, as I said uh, the day after uh, the policy was dropped, you know, no one was more disappointed in the fact the neg didn't become a reality than me. I mean, that's just a statement of fact. We put a, a lot of work into that. But the issue with the Labor Party's energy policy uh, is not the fact that they've adopted the neg. It's more that they've adopted these recklessly high targets, which we've been consistently opposed to, whether it's a 50 per cent renewable energy target or even a more destructive 45 per cent emissions reduction target. So we know you're against target. the targets attached, but, but the neg the is the architecture. You think it's a good plan still, and, and now it's Labor policy. No, I, I actually think that Labor's uh, targets regardless of the mechanism that they use, will cause immense damage to the Australian economy. You've heard from the Business Council of Australia saying that it would be, an, it would be a wrecking ball through the economy. You've heard other groups uh, repeat the, the similar concerns. Uh, Labor has adopted these targets in virtue signalling to the electorate. Again, they're splashing out money, un, you know, unconscious of what will actually happen uh, to the uh, stability and the affordability of power as a result. On Victorian President Michael Kroger, you are aligned to him and you've supported him. That's what your colleagues tell me. Should he take <laughs> responsibility for what has happened in Victoria and resign early? Well, I don't, I, I'm not calling him for, to resign early. Others have, have said that. I have not joined that chorus. He's been a great servant of the party over many decades. There will be a proper review of what went wrong in this campaign, and I would rather wait for the outcomes of that review okay. than engage in finger-pointing at this stage. Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a good idea the party president is on TV as a paid commentator? Surely that's a, a conflict of interest. <laughs> We've got parliamentary colleagues who are on TV. But he's a paid uh, I don't know if they're paid, paid commentators. I understand they're not. Well, look, I, look. Can I just say, uh, with respect to Michael, uh, yes, he's got a, a high public profile that can also be used to to the the party's advantage. Uh, and my, my view about Michael is he has been a loyal and valuable servant to the party over many decades. But he's also made it clear, Patricia, that he's not recontesting the presidency next March. OK, just finally, on a call for a National Integrity Commission, are you going to drag your feet on this one just like you did the Banking Royal Commission? Well, we already have interagency, multi-agency integrity measures right across the border, across about 16 different agencies. We have a public service uh, commission. We have Inspector General of Taxation, Defence, So you haven't security. changed your mind? You don't uh, think this is needed? No, but we can always improve this framework. We can always improve this framework. And Attorney General Christian Porter has said that he's open-minded as to how we can improve that framework. But Bill Shorten said 11 months ago he was going to engage in deep consultations, drafting discussions about uh, such a, an integrity uh, framework or an integrity commission, and we've seen nothing. We've actually seen public policy by press release from Bill Shorten, and we know that it's a political stunt on his behalf. Treasurer, Again. Treasurer, thanks for your time. Nice to be with you.